Kef LS 50s and people have always been asking me hey when are you gonna do the Kef LS 50s and I knew of Kef line enough but then I looked it up and it was like thirteen a hundred dollars I'm not spending patreon money on that I could I just what if they suck and then I gotta sell them so luckily someone sent these to me brand new and I'm going to forward it to them for their birthday which is soon anyway I'm going to admit that these are now the prettiest speakers I've ever seen. In fact, look at them up on the Doom stacks. No subs are involved in this when we're playing here, by the way. That's that's the rule. And they're they're lit from the bottom with this IKEA light that I cut in half and then mounted. Ah, oh, ah, oh, just tastes high end in here. They're giving this room more class than I know it has. So, bravo, Kef. It's got this like crystalline matte, like it, it, there's bits of like sparkle in whatever this is. I don't know if you can see them. I can see them. And then it's piano black, like, like very, very black. And then they've got the kef written up here in just like an off, it's like a matte. Oh God. The back off center, non mirrored port flared. Oh God, there's too much reflection. And actually, there's a cool feature, and I say cool feature, but I, I talked about it in my unboxing, and I don't know the reason for it, but if you finger the port, as Zeos is known to do, instead of there being like a solid tube in there, it's a silicone womb. Womb. You can still see into it. I thought it might have been even cooler where it was just like a, a sealed silicone thing that got squeezed, but no, it's a soft silicone walled oval. Smoked. They didn't have to smoke those, but they're a smoked plastic, so they're just gray. Just as LS50, very simple, very plain. It's got, these, it's got a rubber corner mounts for, probably you have to unscrew those to unbolt the whole front to take this whole thing off. Mm. Now, hi. The issue I had with these speakers when I was looking at them going like, all right, should I try to buy a set and maybe is it here are the Q100 which I reviewed and I gave them a fucking phenomenal review and I'm keeping them and they're staying in, in a shelf in case I want to put out something that's great in a desk and great but if you look this is a $300 pair this is a $1300 pair and the driver other than the color and these little ribs here is identical I mean, it looks identical. It's not identical, but it's the same size. It's the same system. It's the same waveguide. Nothing's changed severely with the shape as this. So how do I put a thousand dollars more into a speaker and use the exact same size driver? Chewbacca, you want to hold this for a minute? Here, you got a Q100, okay? Good girl. Well, that was, a, that was my worry, is these were gonna show up and I had already done those and I looked at those and listened to those. Can I see s telling people to buy these for a thousand dollars more? Yes, absolutely. 100% without a doubt. And let's get into the whys of that. Because even though the driver is the same size and the box is roughly the same size, rear port on this, front port on that, these can do more remarkable things. Similarly remarkable, like I, I said in the review of the Q100 here, which Chewbacca, please don't jump on top of this. I'm gonna stand it up for a second. That it is the best example of a coaxial speaker I've ever heard. I've heard some other coaxials, I've heard some cheaper ones. I haven't heard any of these studio monitor ones and now even Monoprice has a six and a half inch, which is bigger than that, self-powered pair of coaxial studio monitors. I wanna hear those but the best implementation I'd heard. And now we move over to the best implementation I've heard. And the benefits of a coaxial, refresh everybody, is the tweeter is in the center. There's the tweeter there. And this is the mid-range and bass. So it's all coming from one point. When you get a normal speaker, fuck, I'm out of normal speakers. I've got omnidirectionals on the side. 
When you get a normal speaker and you've got a separation of the tweeter and the woofer, that means that they produce sound at two different points and somewhere along the line it has to mix. But then if you move here, it changes. Everything changes based on left and right and up and down and it's very, very, very hard to get it to be perfect. See, perfect is the word we're looking for. And even my Bucarts that I love, perfect. You still gotta have that distance. Even my JBL LSR3, LSR 305s and Studio 530s, huge separation between the tweeter and the woofer. Coaxa, they don't have to deal with that. But you are doing a lot of very technical things with this because now you have a waveguide for the tweeter that is moving. So the waves coming out of here are supposed to expand in it and it's now it's, it's moving while it's doing that. So to control that and make it not terrible, bravo, Kef, you win this round. So they look amazing and how do they sound? They can take more power than the Q100s by a good margin. I was worried when I was running those here as my, in my home theater, because this is my home theater. I got left, right, rear, surround, subwoofers, piles and piles of subwoofers. And when I put on a movie, I'm worried I'm going to blow something up. In fact, I even blew up the boot carts, which I've repaired on my stream. So go find that stream if you want to watch me repair a $1,300 set or $1,200 set of uh, Danish made speakers. Next. Just listen for a second with me. And I know this is mono on this microphone, so it's not really gonna come through, but. <sighs> One of the things that you get with a coaxial, with a good coaxial, is that you could be up or down or left. I'm standing here. And sometimes standing here is not the best. Sometimes you wanna be sitting exactly here. You wanna get the eye height. All these things come into it. And with these speakers, it doesn't matter where I am. They project sound in the most uniform way I've heard. Because I mean, those, the ohms, I love my ohms. I love you, baby. But they still do weird things to make it good. And these are doing very, very straightforward things to make it good. They're just being fucking good. Chewbacca, what do you think? I, I can usually, I actually have a picture of it. I tweeted it. So you could know exactly how long ago I did this review. Chewbacca will sit in her little spot, which is usually there. And if there's a great speaker up here, not just good, like cat hearing great, she'll stare at it when something's playing. And I got an amazing picture of her staring at the calf, just like, oh God, what is it doing? Whatever it's doing, she knows it. Holographic depth. Should we talk about the, I, I like them up here in my room, right? I like them. I can handle the power more than the Q100s and I was recommending the Q300s because it's a bigger drive, we're gonna handle more. And now there's the 150s and the 350s and they're like $700 and I'm not prepared to, uh, don't mess up my world, baby. I'm not prepared to go for those yet, although, these are tremendous speakers. They work fucking phenomenally in a big room like this for music, I have no qualms about recommending them for here. However, where they did the best, and I'm talking about the best that I've ever heard, even over Studio 530s, which are my bay, is Nearfield. The only thing that I think would beat them in Nearfield are the Stealth 8s. And even then, that was pretty much a muscle over talent. It, it was David and Goliath. The Stealth 8s are Goliath. They are so big, so powerful, so fast that they win. But these are David. I was sitting this far from this on my desk. Actually, it was pointed almost directly at me. And I couldn't help but say over and over again, these are the best things I've ever heard in Nearfield. These are the best things I've ever heard in Nearfield. These are the best things I've ever heard in Nearfield like I was calling Candyman out of the mirror. And I was lucky enough to also have the uh, shit Vidar and Freya in there. So I was running a tube pre and everything, but it doesn't matter. These are the best speakers I've ever heard in Nearfield. Again, thanks to the coaxial design. Shit just was like, 
speakers are left and right. And if you got confused for a second, I did that on purpose. But when you things move from left to right, you usually don't get this. That sort of depth that comes in and moves sound, not just across, but forward and backwards. And these can do that. And I don't know what it's called, and I don't know if you could measure it, but I love it. I'm wholeheartedly going to apologize for not paying more attention to Kefit audio shows. And they've had these there. Here's the thing, they've had these there. And they never sound good when they're at an audio show. But they sound really fucking good on my desk. And they sound damn impressive in this room, even with no sub. Again, I would still sub everything just to protect the drivers, even if it's just to protect the drivers. The reason I blew up my boot carts, my fucking rare Denmark Mark I boot carts, is because I didn't have the frequency cutoff on my receiver set to limit them. They were doing like 40 hertz. And Fury Road came on, and then farting noises. So, if you're doing a dedicated stereo listening setup, you'll have no problems running these direct. No, right now, they're running direct. They'll get every, fre every frequency ever. I have no, these are loud right now. These are loud. I mean, that's Marilyn Manson's Pretty as a Swastika, and I didn't pick it, it just randomly came on because I have that entire album. And I have no worries that these are going to explode. Those, those at this volume, I would be shitting my pants. But I've run these up and up and up, and they have no qualms about doing anything you need them to do. Here's some dead mouse for you. On those, on those, I was getting a little bit of like a noise because when this moves, it has to pass that and it was sort of like a chuff. It wasn't from the port. It was because a piece was physically moving past the tweeter. Nothing on this, nothing. They don't care, they don't care. And you can run them without a sub in a dedicated stereo setup, perfectly fine. You're putting on movies though, I highly, highly recommend you getting a subwoofer to take the load off. Drop these to 55, they shouldn't do anything below that, sends it all to the sub, which look what's out to play. Should I put it on? No, we're not gonna put them. We're not gonna influence this with that, although you people have been begging me for that review, so it's coming. Oh my God, that bell. Listen, listen. Those bells are here. I'm living, there's like a string of bells. It's not like I'm hearing speakers. It's like there's a there's an eight foot string with seven bells on it and someone's going shh and it's just laying it out across here. And it does the same thing on a desk. That's the thing, it does the same thing on a desk. It pained me to take these off my desk to put them back in here because tomorrow I'm doing the sound demo. And I'm like, well, I gotta, I gotta listen to them in the living room and I gotta do the sound demo there. I almost wanted to put these on my desk to do the review like it was a near field studio monitor. And uh, I didn't. Do I have to find a flaw with them? Because it's, it's real hard. Usually I'll find like that one thing that, you know what really annoys me though is this. I can't find it on these speakers. Well, they sort of look like uh, they're worth a fucking million dollars, so that's not it. And they're, they're mildly heavy, which shouldn't be a problem. Oh, well, the, the ports, I guess, aren't mirrored. Uh, there you go. The ports aren't mirrored. These come in white with a blue cone. Here, all right. You want to know what I would have for a dream desk setup? And it would piss people off? They make a self-powered version of this for like two grand. Do not buy that. You have to have a very, very specific need for that. Because I don't, unless they're doing something crazy by amping inside of it that's going to improve this even more, you could save seven, eight hundred dollars and just buy anything you want, a Vidar and two pre's to power them. But they come in white with blue cones and the powered ones come in gray with red cones. And if I could have my wish on this earth, it would be to have a white pair of these with a red cone and a blue cone 
and I would use them as a pair with my color scheme and ah, oh, but I, hey Kef, if you're watching, send me one of those and I will uh, dance the truffle shuffle live on webcam. Well, live when I'm streaming, I'll dance truffle shuffle. If you have no budget, if your budget is, um, I just want the best thing I've ever, you've ever heard in a desk. Here it is. I want something also that I could bring out into a small enough room. And this is not a small room. We're looking at 15 feet from that door to that window or from the wall to wall and 18 feet wide. This is a big room ish. I know people have bigger rooms, but in my life, this is a big room for me. Oh, Sicario is going to play. I can look how close I am. Like that's moving and that's creating volume, but I'm just like, well, go ahead. I don't understand, all right? I'm the first to admit when I don't understand something, because that means next time you people can understand why I don't understand, because I don't understand it now. I'm so glad I'm not an audio engineer, because then I would be analyzing the fuck out of this and like, well, why does it do it? Let's get the measurement rings out. I don't care. I don't care why it does it. I just care that it does it, and I care that it's... It's not the best speaker I've ever heard. I'm not going to change the title of my ohms, because I still think I love those a little more. But on a desk, these are the best near-field speakers I've ever heard. Period. End of quotation marks. You, you done? There's a sound demo in the description, and I haven't filmed it yet, so I have no idea where the placement's going to be, but I'm getting a feeling it's going to be real close to, like, right there, which is what you do with good near-field monitors. Ah. My hat's off to Kef. Right? They were a name that sort of like went, eh, and now they're a name that sort of goes, uh. So they've gone from eh to uh. Give them a shot. If the Q100 is still available, I might even link these. Because these are like, as great as these are, and I said, oh, I bought them for 300 but they sound like 500 Well, those sound like 1300 Those sound like 1500 Those sound like speakers you end with. The type of speaker that the blue collar American would save up for and be able to buy and then be perfectly happy for the rest of their life. And you know, this is what, you can get this and stop going to those audio shows where there's $20,000 speaker sets. Just buy these, be happy or buy those and be happy. I, I don't know what else to say about them. I don't know what to say. They claim some sort of ridiculous frequency response like 79 as the low, no. These will hit 40. I've heard them hit 40. Perfect. Ah, Tron Rectifier. Tron OST. Please come out with the second one. Disney, stop being bitches. Anyway. Links to these in the description. Links, hell, I'll link the whole goddamn Kef line in the description. And if anybody else feels like buying a set and sending them to me first, and then I send them to you in a month, talk to me about it. Preferably the new Q150s or 350s. Honestly, 350s, oh God, they're so pretty. They're also pretty. They're also goddamn pretty. Not this pretty, but they're pretty. All right, sound demo in the description. Patreon link in the description, which the Patreon will help send these to that guy before his birthday, uh, probably today. And then, you know, yard sales and giveaway. Well, actually, there will be a giveaway because the uh, Mod House cubes are getting given away. Getting gotten given away. Yeah, wallpaper, which I had to add her sleeve. Just want to point that out that it was effort went into that one to make it a 16 by 9. Chewbacca, you good? I'm good. We're good. Thank you. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.